So welcome to this first episode of Stitchcraft, where I'm going to attempt to uh, do some programming, uh, mostly JavaScript, and, and use MongoDB Stitch. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm Adrian. I'm a developer advocate for MongoDB. Uh, I, you could find me at uh, hackathons and uh, different community events. And if you're in New York City, I'm pretty active in uh, Borough.js. Uh, today, we're going to use Stitch along with AWS S3 to uh, start building kind of a Instagram style photo streaming app for the web. So we'll be using React um, yeah, as, as the front end. So the first thing I need to do is I have my um, MongoDB Atlas Cloud Manager pulled up. I need to create a cluster. So I'm gonna build a new cluster. And I'm just gonna go down here and I'm gonna pick a free tier. I'm gonna use AWS. I'm gonna use the free tier that's available in North America. But if you're in Europe, we have one available in Frankfurt. Uh, and if you're in Asia, we have a, one in Singapore and one in Mumbai. Uh, so that's great. I'm gonna keep going and make sure that I choose the uh, M0. Uh, to make sure it is the free tier. We are currently using uh, MongoDB 3.6 uh, with Wired Tiger. And I'm just gonna, gonna go ahead and create that. And also I'm not a robot. And it's confirmed I'm not a robot. Uh, so that's gonna build uh, for a little bit, getting my, uh, my M0 cluster set up. So we're going to kind of Give that a few seconds to provision. Then we're going to go into the Stitch console and we'll start setting up our app. Um, we're gonna, so kind of a little walkthrough uh, of the app. The first thing I wanna be able to do is to authenticate. Uh, I, I want posts to be public, but not public to the world. So I'm going to utilize uh, Google authentication, which is uh, really simple to do with Stitch. Uh, and then once people are authenticated with Google, they can start uploading photos. Uh, in the future, I could do a thing where I use the webcam and capture photos. Uh, if you wanna do kind of um, like a selfie a day type type thing, you can do that. Uh, for this, we're gonna start simple and we're just going to upload pictures uh, kind of one at a time from the hard drive. So once they're authenticated, they'll be presented with a uh, file upload um, input they can add a file, uh, it will get uploaded, stored into S3. Some data about it will be stored in MongoDB and we will uh, do a, a little display. So still waiting for this to, to, to happen. I contemplated getting my cluster set up before, uh, but then you'd be missing out on all of this uh, waiting time, which is, which is super fun. Actually, I just realized that I did not switch it to where you could see the desktop. So I could have just had it ready. And now I'm over here in the corner. So this is my first time doing a live coding stream on uh, Twitch. So as I do more, you'll probably see me get better and better. Uh, and just to give you a little background as a developer advocate, I pretty much learn how to use our software the same way that you do. Uh, so I rely heavily on the docs uh, as, uh, as well as example code and any documentation that comes with the SDKs. Um, my only advantage is I have a Slack channel where I can um, talk directly to the uh, engineers if, if all else fails. And we are so close. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, today I'm recording or recording and streaming uh, from the new headquarters in, in New York City. I'm on the 38th floor of the Paramount building. It's a lovely view I'd show you, but everything is set up stationary, so I don't want to me mess with the de delicate balance uh, that I have set up here. Well, that's doing that. I guess I can flip over to my terminal window and I'm just gonna go ahead and start building out a project directly directory while I'm waiting for that. Um, so I'm just going to make directory and we're gonna call it Stitchcraft Extreme. And then we'll go into there. There we go. And this is where I'm going to put my, my GitHub, start my GitHub repo. I like to um, kind of have this top level folder because uh, in GitHub, I like to store a copy of my Stitch application, which I can export using the CLI. Uh, and then also have um, kind of a fresh directory for my web UI. Um, so, you know, I can make directory stitch app and I'll use that later. Uh, and then shortly here, we'll use uh, create react app to um, just kind of get us started with react. Hey, and it's done. Awesome. So we have a, uh, M0 cluster created. And so 5, 12 mega RAM should be plenty uh, for what we're going to do. And so let's go over and create our Stitch application. Uh, so we'll create a new application. And I'm going to name this Stitchcraft Pickstream. And we're going to go ahead and create that. This one will not take as long to create. And so what this is doing is it's creating um, an application instance on Stitch and linking it to our cluster zero, our, our free tier cluster that we just created. Uh, then we'll go in and we'll do uh, a little bit of setup. We'll point out um, the documentation for Stitch. If you go to docs.mongodb.com slash Stitch, uh, this is gonna give you everything you need to get started. Uh, and we're going to be using the, this heavily today. We'll go back over to the applications. We're going into the application. All right. And so this is what we're presented whenever we first start up with Stitch. Um, we have a lot of getting started things. Um, we have the ability to turn on anonymous authentication. I'm not going to use that for this project. We could initialize a collection, uh, all different things. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is go in uh, to the users. And then if you look, we have different providers that we can use. The, probably the simplest to implement would be the email password. Um, but I don't want to have to remember one more password. So let's just go ahead and set it up to use Google. Uh, so it's currently disabled. I'm going to enable it. And that is uh, now it's asking for a client ID and secret. Let me pull over my Google panel, which probably should have been here. Uh, I'm going to create a new project for this. And I'm going to call it Stitchcraft Stream. And sure, that's fine. 
awesome, it's creating that. And I might have to consult the ducks to figure out where I need to go for that uh, to get the, this next information. So let's switch over to that project. Um, yeah. All right, let's go to the docs. So we can go to users and authentication providers. And you see down here, we have Google authentication. Uh, and it walks you through configuration. And here, na, 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 na. this is where we get our client ID and secret. So we'll just go ahead and open that in a new window. And Okay, setting up OAuth 2.0. Okay, we're in the console uh, for the project list. We selected the project. The API and service pages are up uh, on the left side. API and services, cool. Uh, back to that. Uh, click credentials. Credentials. And new credentials, OAuth client ID. Okay, credentials, OAuth client ID. And here we're gonna need uh, some information. So you to create OAuth client ID, you must first set a product name on the consent screen. So let's configure the consent screen. And we're gonna use all that. Product name, this is going to be Pickstream. Um, if all of this is optional, we're just gonna leave it optional. I'm gonna go ahead and save. All right, so this is definitely going to be a web application. And we're just going to name it again. All right, the authorized JavaScript origin. So if we go back to our documentation for Stitch, we can just simply copy here. And add that in. And then our authorized redirect URLs. Copy that. And put that in. And we'll create. And here is our information that we're going to need for Stitch. So that was the client ID. And now we'll grab the secret and put that in. And for redirect URL, URI, so let's go back and see what it says about that. Well, for this we're gonna put in, we are going to be working with our local host for now. So we'll do local host 3000, which is what um, create react that gives you. And we're not going to add any domain restrictions, but this is pretty cool. If you're writing an app for just you, you can um, restrict it to your domain. So at MongoDB, we use uh, Google apps. And so I could actually restrict this to only people with at MongoDB or at Tengen. Uh, uh, email addresses, uh, but we're not going to do that. And for the metadata fields, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and grab everything. Because why not? We could use it down the line. 
So I'm going to save those changes. I'm not going to save it. That. Uh, and this is all saved. So we have essentially set up uh, Google Authentication. Uh, if any of you have tried it using like Passport and a Node.js server, uh, it's a lot more involved. Uh, so this is all that we need to do on the um, back end to, to get Google set up and going. And so now let's switch over to um, actually start building that part in. All right. So I'm going to use MPX. Uh, create React app, and I'm just going to call it Web UI because that's what I want the folder to be created. And so, if my memory is good, this is going to work on the first try. And so far, so good. And so it's going to do some package installs and whatnot. that building. There's a lot of waiting involved in programming. I, I think that's why we have so many toys on our desk. Uh, but what we're going to do now is create a simple page uh, that facilitates authenticating using uh, Google. And to do that, we're going to get the scaffold of our app together. Uh, we'll install the MongoDB Stitch Browser SDK um, in it. Awesome. OK, so let's go into Web UI. And does it need me to do? Awesome. So let's go ahead and npm install MongoDB Stitch Browser SDK um, and the new NPM is pretty great because I don't have to do dash dash save anymore. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Um, might seem like a long package name, but we have SDKs uh, for so many things. We have uh, a server version that works uh, best with Node.js and we even have a React Native version. So if you wanted to um, build a mobile app, which we might, might, might do that later, we'll see how how, how, we, how much we get done with this. Uh, so cool, that's installed. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my um, code IDE and make that bigger. Awesome. Do a little check to make sure you can see it. Um, but inside the source folder, we've got an index, uh, pulling in an app and what I like to do what I've started doing is instead of making that an app I'm going to make it a stitch app and so I'm just going to do some refactoring here real quick stitch app stitch app Dun, 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 dun. We'll ignore that other stuff. And then we'll go back to index and we're going to import stitch app from stitch app. And we're going to have it render stitch app. And we're going to pass it an app ID as a prop. Just, a, just one way to do it. Always remember to save. Uh, so we're going to go back to our console and to clients. And in order to connect our React app to our Stitch app, uh, we, we're going to use this app ID. So I'm going to copy it and go back over here and pass it in here. And so let's make Stitch app, use it. And so we need the constructor. Constructor 
words are hard to spell sometimes. Uh, and it's that's gonna take props, and we need to super props. Sure. Trying to figure out why that little red mark's there. Don't sweat the small stuff. Uh, so let's just go ahead and save the app ID, uh, which is props.app ID. Um, why is that doing that? Did I spell constructor wrong? Oh, I, I see what it is. I uh, put that in the render method. Awesome. Okay. Uh, and then from this um, app ID, we can create a stitch client, but first we need to actually import it in our stitch information. And to do that, uh, we'll just briefly go over to um, the documentation. Uh, so there's a nice example here of what I'm doing. Uh, so we brought in the Stitch Browser SDK. Uh, eventually, we're going to need to bring in uh, the MongoDB uh, Stitch Browser Services MongoDB Remote and also the Services AWS so we can play around with that. Um, and so we do need to import Stitch. We're also going to need to bring in the credentials that we're going to use, which is going to be Google. Uh, and then we can... Uh, Create a, create a client. So let's go back over and do that. So we're gonna do import, and I, I am uh, at a live office, so if you hear any uh, noises in the background, just, just ignore it. Um, so we're gonna bring in Stitch, and what is that called? It is called the Google Google re redirect. I've used this a few times. Uh, redirect cred credential uh, from MongoDB. Oh, darn it. MongoDB. I'm, I'm doing so great with autocomplete. Stitch browser SDK. Awesome. All right. And so then we can come back down here and we can create ourselves a client. So this dot client is equal to stitch dot initialize. Most of the time when I talk to myself, no one is listening. Um, someone could be now. Uh, so we're going to initialize the default app client. Um, we're only going to have one, so we might as well just use the default one. And we're going to pass in uh, the app ID that we just grabbed. And so this gives us a client um, to stitch. Uh, nothing fancy. Let's see here. Is there anything else that I need to do for that? Um, so actually, one thing I never did was run this uh, to make sure it works. Uh, so it's going to look very create React app. Uh, I'm going to open up another little shell split here. And I'm going to do an npm start to get it running. And with any hope, it will open up in the correct browser. That's funny. Oops. I have another create React app running. Okay. Let's stop that and start again. All right, and it did indeed open it in the wrong window. So let's drag that over. All right, 
So as you can see, welcome to create React app. Or welcome to React, nothing, nothing special. So let's go back over to the code and start building out uh, a login screen. Uh, so with Google, it's fairly simple um, because it needs only a button. So let's just throw on uh, a button. I'm getting all kinds of messages. Um, just kind of looking, where can I steal um, what the button looks like? And am I using, okay. And let's see. Let's keep track. Yeah, that would probably be good. Let's keep track of if this thing is authenticated or not. And we'll use state to do that. So that way we can make it reactive. And so let's set up our state. This dot state is equal to. Um, <laughs> Yeah, let's find out if we're auth yet. So let's say is auth is equal to this dot client dot auth dot is logged in. So now that we have the client, we can tell if it's logged in. Hopefully we are not uh, because I have not built that part in yet. And so we'll just set the initial state to is off. And then down here in the render, um, let's, let's get rid of all this. Yeah, we don't need it. Uh, so we have our app div, and we want to show two different things depending on if you're logged in or not. Uh, so let's just go ahead and, and make that very simple. Um, and we will check um, let's grab is off from right? so const is off it's equal to this dot state and we'll do if if is off we are going to show, for right now, let's just do a div and say, you're off. And then else, this is where we're gonna have to put in all of our logic stuff uh, for, for authenticating with Google. Uh, but that's gonna be really easy because we're just gonna use a button right now. Button lowercase button um, and we'll say sign sign in using Google and that's not going to be enough we're actually going to need an on click are going to grab our client. We're gonna go this dot client dot let's see here. Oh, jumped ahead. All right. So we need to use this Google redirect uh, credential that we pulled in up here. And so we're going to say that, uh, let's make this a little better. Probably should put that out into its own function, but for right now. Right, 
てやりましょう。It's equal to a new Google reader at credential. All right, and then we're going to use that credential to log in. And that is going to use the auth. And we are going to log in with redirect、um, because of the way the OAuth2 works. And we are going to pass it the, the credential. All right. And so that's actually going to、uh, refresh the page.、Uh, and so we have to catch that whenever that comes back. And so we can do that using a component bin mount. So we'll do component bin mount. And we're going to check if this.client.auth.has. As redirect a result, then we need to handle it. So, whenever you get redirected back to this page, Google will actually add、um, information onto the,、uh, onto the URL. And so, we have this handy little function that will check to see if that information is on the URL. And if it is, we can handle it. And so we just need to do this.client.auth.handle redirect result. And that returns a promise. So we'll do then.、Uh, and that resolves to a user. And we're going to take that. And we're going to set the state this.set state. I know, I know. I know, I get the same stuff. And we're going to set these off to client. off. That is login. Awesome. So we've handled that redirect. In theory, I feel like I'm. Nope. Yep. Let's make sure to save.、Uh, so, this should make sure that our is a u t h a n state is set correctly.、Um, so, right. If we aren't authenticated, you'll see the button to authenticate. If we are, you'll see off. So, hopefully, simply, we have created this. So, let's go back over. Um, oh, all we see here is sign in using Google.、Uh, step one, good. So let's click it. I'm going to pull up my console. And、uh, of course, I have a typo. And while I'm in here, let's get rid of this logo. Recording.、Um, okay.、Uh, so I, I did a typo. This is half of the fun of、uh, coding with everybody watching.、Uh, where is it at? It's right here. We got to do things the React way. And so I'll save it. Uh, and then we'll go back over and it will refresh. And we'll try once again to sign in using Google. And there's probably another typo. So it says that、uh, our localhost 3000 is not an authorized redirect URI. And probably I forgot that ending slash. So let's go back over to our Stitch console.、Uh, go back to users, back to providers. Back to Google and let's add that there and hit save. Everything else looks good. We're not using HTTPS. And let's go. All right, 
So we're just going to have to manually take it back here. And again, we're still not authenticated, but we can click the button. And great. So it's going to ask me to choose which account I want to log in with. Uh, it's the first time I logged in, so I got to say that I trust us. I trust me. Uh, and, and now we're redirected back. We're handling that redirect URL and uh, we're off. Uh, so that was simple. Uh, Might've just taken the long way around, but uh, we got there. Uh, so let's, let's see, what do we need to do next? Um, next, I think we need to handle uploading a file. Uh, so I guess 30 minutes in, we created uh, our cluster. We um, created our Stitch app. We set up Google authentication and we started building um, a React app. Not not bad. Uh, I couldn't have done that this quick uh, with, with Node and, and Passport. All right, so I did some searching and there are there is a handy um, kind of guide in the React docs talking about how to use uncontrolled components. Uh, one of those components is the input uh, type equal file. So we'll be using that. Um, and uh, really, I think we can steal that. So uh, let's go ahead and, and create a file input component. Uh, need, let me put this where I can see it without switching back and forth. All right, so let's go back to our, our terminal window and let's make this its own component, just like they have in here. So I'm gonna create a new file and it is going to be file input.js. And so we need to import uh, React and component from React for your starters. Uh, and then we can create our class, class file input extend component, that one. Cool, it's going to have a constructor. It's going to take props and we are going to pass that to super. Yep, yep. It's going to have a render method. Um, and it's going to return some JSON, uh, some JSX. All right, so what do we need here? Oh, actually, before I forget, let's go ahead and do our Export default. I feel like I switch back and forth so much that I forget how, how to do this. Yeah, just single. Export default file input. And so we're going to take uh, the regular file input and we're going to wrap it a little bit. Um, with, with some, some React and, and, and actually handle it. Keep checking the uh, chat just to make sure I'm not ignoring anybody. Uh, and so let's go ahead and put a form on there. Uh, let's handle that in a minute. Uh, let's go ahead and use a label. and say upload file. And also add an input type. 
type equal file. It's good for now. Uh, in the label, uh, sure, we'll put a break. Actually, I'm going to put a yeah, we'll put a break there. Put a break. Uh, and then we need a submit button. Type equals submit. And we'll make it say upload. All right. Uh, so before we do that, let's go ahead and import this and place it. And we're going to import file input from, well, this is kind of messy. Let's go ahead and fix this. Let's do a new folder, call it components. And we're just going to go ahead and move that into there. Yeah, that's fine. And so now we're going to do dot slash components file input, um, and just very simply, we'll just throw it on the page. So after uh, after you're off, let's make that a little fancier. And make that an H2, fill that in. And we'll go ahead and throw in our file input, just like that for right now. And we'll go back over here and take a look and see. Silly, silly mistakes. How about from React? That's kind of why I do this uh, a little bit of a time. All right, uh, so because I haven't logged out, I'm still off, and now we see uh, a simple UI for uploading a file. So we can choose a file, we got lots of files here, um, but it won't do anything. All right, so let's, let's fix that. If we look back on our uh, documentation we found here about uh, the file input tag and, and using it, we need to create a ref uh, and use that ref in it. So let's let's go ahead and add that in. So up here in the constructor, we're just going to do just that. So let's go ahead and go this dot file input equals react dot create. All right, and I don't use semicolons. Um, which is, you know, up to you, you be you. And then we're gonna reference that ref down here, this dot file input. Let prettier take over. Um, the other thing that we're gonna need to do is have this form do something on submit. Uh, so we're going to need a, a handle submit. And so we'll just go ahead and create that. Handle submit, it takes an event. And we're gonna go ahead and do an event.prevent default, just for good measure. Um, let's go ahead and pop that on the form. So on submit equals this dot handle submit. Okay, uh, see the other thing we wanna do up here is we wanna bind that handle submit. Uh, so this is the correct thing, handle submit this dot handle submit dot find this cool uh, so it's wired up but it's not really going to do anything right now 
So let's go ahead and add something in here. Um, let's add a console log. So let's console.log and we can pull in, let's just do a template string. So we'll say selected file and that's gonna be this dot file input dot current dot files of zero. And we'll just grab the name. Cool, cool. Uh, so whenever we upload a file, uh, basically what it's going to do is just console log out the name so we know that this is working. All right, back to this. Um, so I'm gonna go back, gonna choose a file, gonna choose, um, here's a nice picture of my dog wearing a top hat. And I'm going to hit upload. Uh, and down here in the console log, uh, we're handling, we're handling uploading using this component. Awesome. So I guess the next thing to do would to be uh, put it in S3. And to do that, we got a little more set up to do with Stitch. Um, I have an S3 bucket that I already created in one of these tabs that I lost. Oh, don't need that one anymore. Where did my S3 bucket go? Nope. Yep, there it is. All right, so I have an S S3 bucket uh, created. Uh, it's named Stitchcraft Pickstream, uh, and we're going to uh, make it so we can, use, can connect that using Stitch. And so to do that, we're going to have to go into services. We're going to uh, add a service. Uh, we have a number of services that you can use uh, right off the bat. So if you want to send uh, text messages with Twilio or you want to um, connect to GitHub or, or even do a, a third party request uh, for something that uses REST, uh, we make that really easy. And, but I'm going to use the AWS service. So this is a kind of a generic AWS service that allows us to access all of the, all of the different pieces of AWS. And so I'm just going to name it AWS. Um, and here we need um, an access key ID and a secret ID. Uh, so you would go into your console and you would create that. Uh, I have mine written down and I'm going to uh, switch over here for a minute and enter those in uh, so no one steals them. Uh, so I'm going to put in my access key. We'll just walk you through what I'm doing. And I'm going to put in my secret access key. And I'm going to add the service. And let me come back. And now we have to create a rule. Um, might be a good uh, time to point out that we have these wonderful um, wonderful quick quick starts uh, so this one under mongodb stitches to integrate a third-party service and if you look at that they are using uh, s3 uh, so that makes this really easy for us and so we have to have one rule to, to, to use the service. Um, and I'm going to call this uh, just S3. We're going to add the rule. Uh, and in here, we're going to add an action. Uh, for the API, we can choose S3. And the action that we're going to be using is put object. And what this does is Stitch will do a check on its side before actually uh, completing this action to make sure um, any kind of validation is done. If we left this empty, uh, it'd be free gain. Uh, so anything we do with put uh, will work. Uh, if you look over on this uh, quick start, there are uh, some rules uh, that they use. So we could actually specify 
uh, what the bucket that we use uh, is, um, what ACL we're using, and then even uh, the type of content. Uh, so here they're saying that uh, they only want you to be able to upload PNGs, JPEGs, and, and, and GIFs. Uh, so let's let's take a couple of those. So I definitely only want people uh, uploading to my bucket. So let's go ahead and copy that. This line here. And so what we're doing is we're creating a rule by building a JSON object that it will check. In uh, my bucket is called Stitchcraft. Spelling is going to be very important here. Pick stream. Uh, and I think that's going to be good for right now. I can always go back uh, and change it later. And so I'm going to save that. And now we have a rule. And so it's set up. So let's go over and do something with it. Um, I, I briefly pointed out that uh, in, in the documentation for Stitch Browser SDK, if we want to use something more than just the, the browser SDK, we're, uh, we're gonna have to install some extra uh, node modules. And so what I'm interested in right here is this uh, AWS services one. So I'm just gonna copy that out and we're gonna go back to our terminal window. I know, I know there's a terminal window in code. Uh, I just haven't started using it yet. Uh, I recently switched over from using Atom uh, again, use what works for you. It's just a tool, but uh, everybody was using this and I thought it was looking pretty cool. So still discovering all of the fun features. So I'm going to install that and then we can start using it. Okay, so right now this component doesn't know what to do with Stitch. I just threw it on the page. So it's kind of a dummy component. Um, there's a couple things I can do. I could pass an instance of the Stitch client into it, um, but that's not very reusable. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a handle upload function that I can pass into it. And that way this component can be used for, you know, anything, whether you're using Stitch or, or something else, or if you just, I don't know if you want it to um, just print, print out something. So let's work on doing that. Uh, so I'm gonna write that in here. So let's make handle uh, file upload. And that's going to be a function that takes mm -hmm. So we're going to make it take, what's that return? I think I need file. I think I need the file. Um, yes. So the single file that we uploaded, we're going to make it take a file. Okay, and what's it gonna do? Oh my gosh, I'm running out of time. Just took my time doing all this. So we're gonna take that file, and the first thing we need to do is actually let's let's make sure that we have a file because that could be disastrous. So if there's not a file. We're just going to return for now. Um, if there is a file, uh, in order to upload it to um, S3 using the 
S3 service from Stitch, it needs to be a binary uh, or a BSON binary object. And so we actually have to convert that to it. Ooh, okay. So if we look at our example over here on how to integrate the service, um, we can see that they actually created a function to convert it. Uh, and I think we should just use that function. Why not? So I'm going to steal it. It's fine. So we're going to take it, put it in the code. It did not do everything. It did not get everything I wanted. So we're going to try that again. See if that works. It's going to be very. So apparently, it does not like grabbing the first line. All right, let's try that again. Hey, there we go. And then we'll just fix it up a bit. All right. Uh, so this is going to return a promise um, because we're doing a nice little async call in here, uh, but it's going to resolve to a, a BSON object. Uh, and we're just going to, to trust that our, our fine folks in documentation built a, uh, the function that works. And so let's go through and uh, handle that. So we're going to call this.convert. image to be on object nice nice name that kind of tells you everything you need to know about it uh, that's going to return a province with a result yeah cool so we've taken the file and we've turned it into bison um, but but then what what do we do with that um, Let's look and see what they're doing over here. All right, so now yeah, got that, got that, got that. All right, so we need an instance of the AWS uh, service client. Uh, for that, I want to put that up in here, up in here. Um, so I need to pull that in from the package that we just installed. And I have it copied over here. There we go. So let's import some things. Uh, the AWS service client, and then we're also going to need uh, the AWS request to help us build the request. <laughs> Um, all right, I'm going to start copying some lines here. So let's connect to our AWS service. Um, so once we have a client, we can do this client that get client service. We can give it the AWS service directory. Uh, and this is the name of the service that, that I uh, created in the Stitch console. Uh, so we've got that great. Uh, I put it up there uh, in case we need to use it in the future. Uh, like I said, that's a generic um, service. So uh, so, so it, it could, if we wanted to use Kinesis or we wanted to use SES to send an email, uh, we, we have access to that, that client up there. So if we go back to our handle file, we... Oh, thank you, Prettier, for collapsing things as I walked away. Um, da, 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 da. Lost my place. Um, right. And so to, uh, to upload it, we're going to need a key. We're going to need another bucket. Um, and then 
we will have a URL that we can pull it back out using that those two pieces of information. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste that in. Uh, for the key, I'm going to use uh, the authenticated user's ID and the yeah. name of the file. So that yeah. way, if yes. I upload something and you upload something and it's the same file name, they're, they're going to be different. Um, I think we're still going to be fine if we upload the same thing twice. Uh, again, new to S3 as well. Uh, but let's, let's use this. Um, and then we need to build um, some args uh, that we'll, we'll pass into the, S3, the generic S3 service. Uh, so we need to give it the ACL and we're going to give that public read uh, the bucket to put it into and that's the bucket. We need to give it the content type. Can I spell? Yes, I can. And that's going to come from file to type. Yes, from what we passed in. And the key, which we created up top. Key. And the body, which is going to be uh, the binary, uh, the BSON binary object that we created with this uh, convert image button a function. And so it's going to be result. All right, so that is part of what we needed to uh, create this request. Um, so let's create the request. So let's do const request. And I'm following along with this uh, example because it's pretty much going to give us uh, what we need. So that's going to be equal to the AWS request um, dot builder. So we brought that in up there. Oh, and we can chain these. So we're building a generic request. It needs to know uh, what service. So we'll do with service. I'm glad that my suggestion's not working. We're going to pick S3 uh, with action. This is where I said that we're going to use the put object action. And we're going to do with region. I believe this will default to US East, but uh, I'm going to put it in there in case anybody is using um, an S3 bucket that's in a different region. Even though mine's in this one. And then we'll pass it the args by using the args. Uh, and that will build our request. And so now we can simply go back and execute this request. Uh, so that's using our AWS um, service that we pulled out. And we're going to execute it um, and pass it request dot build. So it actually puts that together. And that's going to return a promise. So we'll do then. And that's, I will just make it do a result. And for now, we'll just console log the result. The result. And then also, so we can see the, uh, the, the thing that we uploaded, I'm going to go ahead and do console log the URL as well. Awesome. So we have a function. Yes, function, function, function. We have a function. I'm going to save it. Prettier is going to do its thing. Uh, and now we need to actually pass that in 
So let's go down to file input and tell it that handle, we call that handle file upload is equal to handle file upload. So now we're passing that in and we can use it over here. Uh, so now with the file upload, we can leave this here. Um, what we want to get do I want to, yeah, let's just do that. So this dot handle file upload is equal to props dot handle file upload. And we'll just pass the file. So let's clean that up a little bit. Um, const file is equal to this dot file link. Zero. Cool. We clean that up a little bit and say file.name. And this dot handle file upload and pass it the file. All right. Did that work? Will that work? Let's find out. So if we go back over here, uh, let's select a file. Let's go back and find another picture. Mm, oh, another picture of my dog. That's nice. We're gonna open and fingers crossed, we'll hit upload. Awesome. This is not a function. Awesome, so I've probably done a typo. Let's find out. Okay. Handle file upload, yes. Handle file upload. Let's see. So we know that we're getting to here. It is saying, oh, sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing. So over here we have convert image to binary. Let's just make sure it's not a typo. Yeah, no, nope, that's the same. Huh. Yeah. That looks the same. Why is it not liking that? It's not a function. OK. 
Okay, looks like a function. So we're returning the premise. If we change it to that, choose file, choose file. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. Well, it's off of undefined. Okay. So, why did that go undefined? Uh, we were taking that out. This that client. This that client is. Oh, you know what? It's a binding thing. That's our problem. And being really dumb about it. That's what I'm. So when I did this earlier, I just threw everything into the same file, but I thought it'd be cool and break it out. And I'm missing a very fundamental, I think I just need to bind it up here. Let's try that, this dot handle file upload dot is equal to this dot handle file upload dot find this. We'll try it again. Another picture of my dog. All right, well, we got a little further. Did I? Typo again. That would explain why my uh, autocomplete is not working. Let's go over here and look. Okay, so const request is equal to, here we go, new. Slow and steady. Slow and steady wins the race. Um, find another picture, open it, and we'll upload. Sweet. Okay, so here um, we got the selected file, gave us the name, so the console log's still working. We have uh, the e tag, uh, which is a hash of the upload. Um, I don't I don't know if it's really important, but 
there it is. And then the, if we click on this, we actually have our photo that is stored in, in the bucket. Um, so that was, that was pretty quick. Uh, let's try to get one more thing done um, before I have to, to run votes. And now that we have the information in uh, an S3 bucket, and I'm actually gonna go and refresh so you can see there actually is the item in the, in the bucket and I'm gonna delete it so I don't mess up and try to upload the same one. Cool, so my bucket is empty again. Um, now let's go and create something to where we can uh, store it into a MongoDB database since we have a, this cluster created. Uh, and we'll go back to the Stitch console to do that. And we're gonna go under rules um, because just like with services, uh, in order to write things to the database, we need um, rules. So let's go ahead and set that up. We're gonna add a collection. Uh, the database name, I'm just gonna name it data. Uh, and then for the collection name, I'm gonna call this pick stream. Um, is that what I named it? Is that what I decided to name it? It's probably good. Yeah, that works. Uh, and then with rules, it will apply a set of rules before it brings your data back. Uh, so this is just kind of an extra layer of security. And to make it easy, we have these different templates. Uh, so in our app, we want everybody to be able to see our data, um, to see our pictures, but we should be the only ones who can modify them. Uh, so we're gonna choose this temp uh, template here uh, where users can read all data, but only write their own data. And in able for that to work, we need to give it a field that's going to identify us. Uh, and so we've already used the, our user ID once before with authentication. And so I'm just gonna call this owner ID, uh, simple. And so we have one rule set up we can now write to the Pickstream collection in the data database. And if we are the owner ID, if we are the owner, we can read and write. And if we're not an owner, we can read. Um, and now we go back over here uh, and we wanna be able to use the remote MongoDB client. So we're gonna have to install another thing. And we'll just ignore that while that's installing. We're going to need to add an instance of MongoDB. Uh, and so we're gonna have to pull from that, which we're bringing in. And I'm just going to, to kind of copy that over too. We're gonna need the remote MongoDB client. And just FYI, there's another quick start uh, that will help you out. It's the uh, query anywhere with Stitch Quick Start. Uh, walks you through connecting your React application to your MongoDB database. All right, so let's go back up here and import another Stitch library. And so we're gonna use this remote MongoDB client and we're gonna go back to the constructor and we are going to pull in uh, get a reference to our MongoDB instance. So back to the constructor. I like putting this here. Uh, and so I'm just going to say this.mongodb uh, is equal to this.client.get service client. This time we're passing at the remote MongoDB client.factory. Uh, and the uh, instance that we're going to be using is uh, MongoDB Atlas. Cool. So now. Uh, back down here where we handle the file, uh, we just need to add some references to our collection. So, I think I actually added that, did I? Yeah. So we need to get to the pick stream and we will go ahead and 
give us a reference in here. Cool. Uh, so we're going to define our Pickstream collection using the MongoDB instance that we just did in the data database uh, in uh, the collection Pickstream. And so this will allow us to, once we get this back, I'm going to leave those console logs in there just uh, because why not? And I'm going to return pick, pick stream dot, and we're going to insert a document into the database. I'm trying to speed this up so we can at least get this far. Ba, 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 ba. Here we go. Uh, and so in order to do that, we're gonna use the insert one method. And that simply takes a JSON document. Cool. And we're going to give it the following information about the file. Uh, so first, we need to make sure, oh, I've got an extra one of those. Actually, I've got an extra two of those. Um, when we set the rule, we need to make sure we give it the owner ID. And so we're going to set the owner ID equal to the ID of the authenticated user. Uh, so we use it up there to create the key. We'll use it down here uh, to add it to the database. Uh, and then we can add some information about the file. Um, the URL that we created, uh, the name and type of the file, and then we'll even go ahead and throw in the, that e tag. Um, just for good measure, why not? Uh, and the good thing is, um, it doesn't matter if we are missing data because of the flexibility of MongoDB. So if you wanna go back and add a, uh, well, let's do it now. Let's go ahead and add a timestamp and we'll set that to a new date. Data queue, all right. Um, so that way we know when it was uploaded. Uh, in the database. So just some information that we'll put in. Uh, and then again, this is returning the promise chain. We're going to get a result. And we're simply going to console.log that result. And because of the way my day has been going, I'm going to go ahead and throw a catch on there and I'm going to console.log that error. Cool. All right, with any luck, we should be able to upload a photo and it will add a record to the database. Fingers crossed time. Let's go back to our app. Let's choose a file. Let's find another cute dog picture. Oh, lots of them. Um, and then we will hit upload and we'll watch the console log. Awesome. So you can see that our e-tag was returned. Uh, we generated the picture URL. That worked. Uh, and then we have an inserted ID. So let's go back. Let's go back out to our cluster. Uh, this is something I'm very excited about. Something that just came out um, this week. Uh, we, you can actually go in and use Data Explorer on the free tier clusters. Uh, so let's go in, and take a look at our collections. And we're waiting. And here we go. And as you can see, we now have a document. Uh, it's that URL, same e-tag. We have a timestamp uh, and we're good to go. So that's pretty much going to wrap up what uh, I wanted to cover today. Uh, as you can see, it's not pretty. Um, we didn't spend a lot of time on uh, fit and polish, but we did in about an hour and a half, really probably around under an hour, we got our Stitch app uh, set up. We were able to upload a file to S3 and then um, kind of track it using uh, MongoDB. Uh, so 
the next thing that we'd want to do would be to display those images. Um, and, and we'll work on that uh, probably, probably next time. Uh, I will make sure that I uh, tag everything that I'm doing right now in a, in a branch for this episode uh, and upload it to my GitHub uh, repo, uh, which there is a link in the channel. And for recorded episodes, I'll make sure that the link is inside uh, so you can follow along. Uh, but this has been kind of a quick introduction of using Stitch with uh, AWS S3. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, this time. Um, I'll try to hopefully not have any more wait time. And so we can kind of keep it down to an hour next time. Uh, but thanks for joining and bye-bye.